1 Samuel 28, 1-25. And it came to pass in those days, that the Philistines gathered armies together for warfare, to fight with Israel. And Achosh said unto David, Know thou assuredly, that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. And David said to Achosh, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achosh said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head for ever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that his familiar spirits, and the wizards, out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pitched in Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her, and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at our door. And Saul disguised himself, and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards, out of the land. Wherefore then layst thou a snare for my life, to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up. Antle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stood with his face to the ground, and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me, to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed. For the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets, nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayst make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him, as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou abatest not the voice of the Lord, nor executedst his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth, and was sore afraid, because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. And the woman came unto Saul, and saw that he was sore troubled, and said unto him, Behold, thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, and I have put my life in my hand, and have hearkened unto thy words which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore, I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thine handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat, that thou mayst have strength, when thou goest on thy way. But he refused, and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth, and sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house. And she hasted, and curled it, and took flour, and kneaded it, and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul, and before his servants. And they did eat. Then they rose up, and went away that night. 1 Samuel 29, 1-11 
Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to effect, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds, and by thousands, but David and his men passed on in the reward with a church. Then said the princes of the Philistines, What do these Hebrews hear? And a church said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David, the servant of Saul the king of Israel, which hath been with me these days, or these years? And I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me unto this day? And the princes of the Philistines were oath with him. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place which thou hast appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle. Lest in the battle he be an adversary to us, for wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Is not this David, of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Then a church called David, and said unto him, Surely, as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day, nevertheless the Lord's favour thee not. Wherefore now return, and go in peace, that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. And David said unto a church, Shut what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king? And a church answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight, as an angel of God, notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, He shall not go up with us to the battle. Wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy master's servants that I come with thee, and as soon as ye be up early in the morning, and have light, depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning, to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. 1 Samuel 30, 1-31 And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Zuclag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Zuclag, and smitten Zuclag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives, that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, and their sons, and their daughters, were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ainom the Jezreelites, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abirthal the priest, Ah, Melech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abirthal brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Bezor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, he and four hundred men, for two hundred abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Bezor. And they found an Egyptian in the field, and brought him to David, and gave him bread, and he did eat. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs, and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water, three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me, because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Karatites, and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb. And we burn Zuclag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God, that thou wilt neither kill me, 
nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking, and dancing. Because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines, and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save four hundred young men, which rode upon camels, and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them, David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds, which they drave before those other cattle, and said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the two hundred men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook Bezor. And they went forth to meet David, and to meet the people that were with him, and when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Leel, of those that went with David, and said, because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered. Save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away, and depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us, and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For he will hearken unto you in this matter. But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by this stuff, they shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward, that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Zuclag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. To them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jatur, and to them which were in Aroa, and to them which were in Sipmoth, and to them which were in Eshtimoa, and to them which were in Rachel, and to them which were in the cities of the Jerami elites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Homer, and to them which were in Karashan, and to them which were in Uthak, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to haunt. 1 Samuel 31, 1-13 now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Malchishor, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through, and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword, and died with him. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor-bearer, and all his men, that same day together. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, and they that were on the other side Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities, and fled. And the Philistines cavemen dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head, and stripped off his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to publish it in the house of the idols, and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. And when the inhabitants of Jabeshchilid heard of that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, and went all night, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and came to Jabesh, and burned them there. And they took their bones, and buried them under a tree at Jabish, and fasted seven days.